Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I want to provide information on how to use the on-demand feature in Thinkorswim, aka how to backtest your trades. So I'm going to walk through how to set this up and I'll provide a trading recap of a play I took on QQQ. So this will just be a video of me breaking down my analysis and showing y'all how I evaluate the charts. I also want to briefly discuss the ADX. So let's go ahead and dive right into it. Okay, so first things first, let me show you how to backtest your trades. Y'all know I'm using TOS and it's super easy to get to it. And real quick, for those who are unaware of what backtesting is, just to provide a short definition, it's just simply the process of essentially evaluating like a trading strategy using the past market data to see how trades may have played out. So it's basically a simulation based on historical price movements. And it's pretty beneficial because it can help validate your analysis or your trading plan by seeing if there's any limitations or flaws in your strategy. So it's really just you testing out your logic based on previous trading days. So let me show you how to pull it up. In order to get to it, you're going to click on the top right hand corner here. You're going to see where it says on demand and it has this little clock. Go ahead and click on it. And then once you do, you're going to see it has the think on demand enabled confirmation pulled up. And it says you just started think on demand, a powerful backtesting tool that lets you replay any trading day from the last several months and test your trading skills with simulated trades based on the data. It then tells you the capabilities and what they're included. And it's going to be one 24 seven for your convenience. So you can run back tests at any time, day or night. You can also select previous trading days in the upper left hand corner, as well as like fast forwarding and hitting the pause button. You can watch tick by tick as it goes through. And then of course it's telling you, you can look for simulated trades for stocks, options, futures, Forex, anything that you're trading for the most part. You can watch the PNL of any position statement you previously had. And then of course you can click the on demand button again and it'll go back to your real life trading account. So then once you have all this information and you've read through it, you understand everything, you're just going to simply click on OK. Now, one thing I do want to explain before we get too deep into this, I want to kind of give you guys an overview of why I have certain things pulled up on my chart, mainly the ADX. So you guys can see here it's underneath the volume. It says ADX and it has it for the Wilders. I'll explain what this is, but I definitely want to show you guys in terms of why it's here. Um, so one of the things that I always get asked about is what is my, my favorite indicators? I definitely think ADX is one that a lot of people sleep on, but it is a very, very powerful tool to use. I always use it when I'm back testing my trades. And what the ADX is, is it's the average directional index. And some may ask, OK, so why not just use the RSI? Now, y'all know I do use the RSI, but for a different purpose. The ADX and RSI are similar, but in different capacities. The RSI measures the momentum of price movements, and it identifies those overbought or oversold conditions. It's on a scale of 0 to 100, so anything above 70 is considered overbought, and there's a potential for a reversal or a pullback. And then anything below 30 indicates the stock or ETF is oversold, so there's the potential for a bounce or a rally. Now the ADX, on the other hand, this measures the strength of a trend regardless of its direction. So it won't tell you if the price is trending upward or downward, but it does show you how strong the trend truly is. So similarly to the RSI, the ADX measures on a scale of 0 to 100 as well. But by the technical definition, a high ADX value is in the range of or above 25 to 30 because this signals strong momentum. And then anything below 20, it indicates a weak trend or a consolidating phase. So generally, you can use it to guide strategies that follow the trend. Now, I know some people are counter trend traders, and that can still play in your favor because you can take advantage of evaluating any weaknesses in the security you're trading. One example of this is to use the ADX to confirm if a breakout is likely to follow through or fail. So I say all that to say um, with the ADX, you can ride the wave if it's strong counter trend trade if it's weak, or just simply wait for a breakout and make the most of it. I will say, although there are pros to utilizing the ADX, there are cons as well. The main one being that it tends to lag a little bit behind price action because it's calculated based on moving averages. So it may not react to sudden changes instantly. And also it doesn't indicate direction alone. So you'll need to consider the positive and negative directional indicators for further confirmation. OK, so that was just my explanation on why I have certain things pulled up on the chart. Of course, you guys see the EMAs and of course, I have some price levels as well. But let's go ahead and take a look at the back tested trade. 
I'm going to go ahead and click on the calendar right here and you're going to see it pulls up. You can select any trading day you feel necessary to back test and it also lets you select the time as well. So for this example, I'm going to choose December 23rd and we're going to select the time at about 9.07. I'm going to go ahead and click go. Once you do, you have to wait a second for it to kind of like process and then you can pull it up. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom it in. And you guys can see here it's showing you what actually took place in real life time. Obviously, it's a back tested trade, so it's just the simulation of it. But we're going to go ahead and discuss this trade. And I'm going to break down a few of the things that I think are important. Um, and just in order to understand why I particularly chose to hop into this trade. Now, is it a perfect setup? No, but it was valid enough for me to be confident in entering the trade. So I'll give you all some tips on why I chose to do so. And then also you can apply whatever you feel necessary for your own strategy. OK, so the first thing I'm going to go ahead and do is take a look at what we see as far as the open. Now, pre-market, we can see quite a bit of things to discuss. We see that the crossing of the EMAs, anyone who's unaware, um, I always have my EMAs pulled up. I know in my last video when I did the Tesla trade, um, people were like, you didn't show anything on the chart. It's because I had it on another monitor. So my apologies, y'all. But typically, I have my EMAs pulled up, whether that's the 9 and the 21. It could be the 200 EMA, the 50 EMA, whatever it is. Um, in this case, I had the 9 and the 21 pulled up. We can see pre-market that the 9 crossed above the 21, which will indicate an uptrend. However, that doesn't mean you just enter into a play just because you see one specific confirmation with an indicator. You have to wait for several forms. So for me, I did not enter this trade early on when the market opened. I kind of just waited it out to see. Now, the opportunity for me came when I seen different levels of confluence. So one being here, you're going to see at about... 856, we see the crossing of the EMAs, right? We see the 21 has now crossed below the 9 EMA. And then, of course, we go ahead and we move forward. You're going to see at about 904, the opposite was true. No, 902. You're going to see that the 21 then crossed above the 9. So the blue line is crossing above the green line here. Now, for me, when I seen this doji at 858, this was a clue for reversal. Now, this wasn't a super strong trend because we can see the ADX was kind of low. It was like 23 at the time, 23, 25, which shows me that it's like a moderate trend, but it's still in the direction of being strong. So that was for me enough to understand, OK, what's going on specifically with this particular time frame? Now, of course, I already had these previous support and resistance levels that I charted for. So this 517.95 and this 519.60. These were going to be good ranges for me to kind of understand what the stock would do. I was looking at the rise here at about 854 to see how strong this candle and the volume would be um, based upon the momentum. And then, of course, we've seen it kind of pushed up for a bit. But we see that it didn't hold above this 51960 for very long. It just had a brief push up above it. And then the very next candle was a doji. So again, I'm seeing multiple layers of confluence in understanding what's going to happen with this particular setup. So once I seen this doji candle here, for me, that wasn't enough to enter. Although it is a signal for a reversal, I was looking for at least a few more levels of confirmation. And that came here. So you can see at 902. So you can see the 21 EMA has now crossed above the nine day EMA, which again signals a downtrend. So by the third candle for me, I saw that the ADX was still at about 23 to 25 in that range. And then the volume was kind of steady as well. So for me, that was enough to enter this trade. Now, did I stay in it long? No. Was it a perfect setup? No. However, I was able to ride this downtrend all the way down until about 908. I think I hopped out at the end of this particular candle here at 908. Reason being is because I was not trying to stay into the market for very long on this particular day. I was just looking for a quick scalp. And then I ended up getting it on the play here. So all downward momentum. Um, and again, it's just multiple layers of confluence telling me that this trade, again, not perfect, but it just made sense for what I was looking for. You can see this wedge formed here. It was a full falling wedge, which let me know this is going to be creating lower lows. Now, my big thing with this was that we saw that this particular candle here at 902, it completely respected this level of resistance at the 51960, which kind of confirmed the bearish sentiment for me from the go. Because you can see, obviously, if it's respecting that level, we see that's going to continue to fall. So if anyone is wondering, how do you break down that analysis? I always get those questions like, how do you know? 
it's again all about support and resistance and then of course understanding price action always but this range here was letting me know okay this is the bearish sentiment was going to be approaching and this was validated by that pressure and within this decline we see that the candles created lower lows with each wick following and again this downward momentum was also backed with the volume you guys can see here it was relatively consistent it didn't show any significant spike during the move which also lets you know that this particular trend was pretty solid. So when I combine all these different factors, all these different elements, it let me know that by the third candle here, I should be entering into this trade, which is what I did. I essentially just waited it out to see like, okay, is this gonna be a strong enough downtrend? Again, the ADX was in that range of like 23 to 24. It was still relatively somewhat close to being strong. Wasn't the strongest ever, but I knew then I wasn't staying in this trade long anyway. So even if it would have reversed and, you know, shot and rallied up, I would have already been making sure that I understood where I was exiting this particular trade. Wasn't trying to ride any other wave as well. It was just, again, a quick little play. Momentum was not heavily on my side with this trade. I, I want to preface it by saying that. But again, I knew that this was going to be just a quick trade in and out. I could have stayed in to ride it out into 910, but it wasn't necessary for me. So I was all the way out the trade at 908 at pretty much the low of this particular candle here. So yeah, y'all let me know if you found value in the video. And if again, you want me to do more of these, just let me know in the comment section down below. And again, I thank y'all so much for always showing love and showing support. It does not go unnoticed, y'all. Y'all send me messages and emails all the time and I'm always happy to respond to them. Um, but yeah, just let me know what y'all want as far as like content. And of course, I'll make it happen for y'all. So I hope y'all are enjoying y'all's time with family and of course, enjoying the break. Um, but if any time y'all have questions for me, y'all already know, let me know. I ain't got <laughs> no problem with responding and answering y'all's questions. So yeah, let me go ahead and wrap this video up. As always, I thank y'all so, so much for watching. And of course, I'll see y'all in my next one.